Hey, what's up? This is Shao Style. Got another video here for you, and uh, this is kind of a pain in the ass what I just did. I spent literally about like eight hours trying to figure this out. Yeah, so a friend of mine, he's a motion capture artist, and uh, we're just pretty much talking about uh, motion capture data and, and all that stuff. And like, yeah, so he's going to do me the favor that, you know, when he's able to, he's going to let me use some of his motion capture data to see, you know, what I can do with it and whatnot. So... Uh, I never messed with it before and all that, and I started doing some experimenting. However, I'm a big After Effects guy. I prefer to do as much as I can inside of After Effects. So, since Element 3D is able to support OBJ sequences, I want to figure out a, a workflow to be able to uh, take the motion capture data, be able to add a model to it, and also be able to export that as an OBJ sequence to work inside of After Effects. Well, after a a lot of trial and error, I actually ended up doing it and I figured out a way to do it. So as you can see here, I got a character dancing around playing the air guitar and all that. And yeah, this is all with Element 3D. So, you know, you can see I can move them around and all this stuff. And yeah, I'm actually pretty happy about that because part of the reason I want to work inside of After Effects is because, you know, it's more real time like uh, feedback. So if I want to add a, add in a background and whatnot, I can do all the jumps as I see fit and then just render this out. Now, before you guys sit in your the comfort of your chair and watch this for however long this fucking video is going to be um i gotta be honest with you uh obj files are not as good as you think or as i was hoping to be i was kind of uh disappointed to be honest uh it turns out that obj obj files kind of like lose a lot of data it's not as uh high quality as you would get it's from working with Cinema 4D, right? All right, so this is Mixamo. This is pretty much where I got the animation and the character from. I'll have a link in the description. You can actually create a free account with these guys. They're owned by uh, Adobe. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, there's plenty of tutorials on Mixamo, how to work with it, so I'm not going to mess with that. However, I just want to show you the quality of the characters here. So if I zoom in this guy, I'm going to pause him for a bit. You can see the detail of the skin and the teeth, and, you know, it's pretty awesome, you know? Uh, maybe it's not like that great of, you know, image quality, but I mean, overall, I think it's pretty badass, you know. So if you're going to add like animation, you know, you want to do a video game or something, then, you know, this looks really good, right? So you're able to download this character along with the animation. And here it is, Cinema 4D, right? Uh, there's the animation of him playing uh, the guitar and all that. So let me zoom in on this guy. So if you do a render inside of uh, Cinema 4D. Again, you can see the good high quality of the uh, character and all that stuff, right? However, sadly, when you export it into an OBJ sequence, it loses a lot of <laughs> a lot of uh, detail, as you can see here. You see it, it gets all pixelated and the texture is not as smooth. If I zoom in on his face, you can see the difference. It seems to be missing some like uh, polygons here. You know, the teeth is all fucked up. I mean, you know, it's not as good as it you know can look right and you look at that so if i zoom in, zoom in here in after effects so here's the quality that you're getting uh with the obj sequence using uh element 3d yeah okay so basically what you see here is a fbx file and when you you know download this file pretty much select here an fbx file right so if you want to learn more about importing motion capture data definitely check out um uh, Grayscale Gor Gorilla, I have a link to uh, their tutorial and talking about how to import and where to find models for uh, motion capture data to uh, import it into, uh, into Cinema 4D, right? So, all right, so like I said, you know, it's just to save time. I'm not going to show you how I got this model, how to put it in here. Just watch those tutorials. It's basically the same shit, you know. Also, on a side note, at first I had Cinema 4D uh, R12, and uh, I was trying to import the FBX files into R12, and the animation did not work. So just keep that in mind if you have like uh, an early, a very old version of uh, Cinema 4D. It could be the possibility that FBX files is not going to work, right? So keep that in mind. You may have to like uh, upgrade your, your version of Cinema 4D if like your FBX files are not working. Or, you know, if the animation ain't working. So keep that in mind. Okay, so once you import the uh, FBX files into Cinema 4D, you got to group all these things together. So select both of them, right click, and you want to say group objects. Right, you want to put them in a null because uh, OBJ files it kind of works in like in a hierarchy or some weird shit. So pretty much, uh, as it sees it in a null, it's gonna see the entire file and it's gonna export it. Because if you didn't have the null, it's gonna see just see like the hips or the parasite by itself. 
So I was going to only export one of the two, which I thought was kind of weird. So yeah, when I was exporting this file without putting it in a NAW, I wasn't getting any animation whatsoever. So put everything on NAW, it's basically something you have to do if you're going to be exporting an OBJ from what I see, right? So once that's happened, you need to go to rich.com. I'm going to have the link in the description. Pretty much this guy talks about a script that you have to get. There are two scripts. There's one for R16 and below, and there's going to be another one for R17, which is what I have, right? Because uh, natively, for whatever fucking dumb reason, Cinema 4D does not export, uh, does not export OBJ sequences. Now, if you ever go to File and to Export, It'll say, you know, wait for an OBJ, but that only exports only one single OBJ, right? So with this script right here, what this does, it pretty much tells Cinema 4D to export multiple OBJ files according to your timeline, right? The length of your timeline. So, so yeah, like I said, this one is for R16 and below. So you have to like click on that one and then like uh, you save that script. But in my case, I have R17, so it's right here and you click on it, you get this file. You right click on the screen and you go save page as and it'll tell you you know where do you want to save it and it's gonna save it as this document I say py dot py document so I already saved it so I don't need it again. So once you save that script, you go up here to scripts menu up here, click on it, and you go to script manager. So once you open the script manager, you're gonna open that file you just saved. So this one right here. This is my one I saved it, hit open. And pretty much it's gonna like uh, you can see this stuff now. The thing you have to keep in mind are two areas, which is right here. If you hit Control D on your Cinema 4D project, you get the information. It's uh, 30 frames per second, and the maximum time is 187 frames. So you want to make sure the FPS right here matches your, this, your project's uh, frame per second, as well as here, right? Like you can like uh, say if you want to like only render out half your projects you can start at, you know whatever but I'm gonna start at zero and also the time to the length of my project here which is 187 so I'm gonna type 187 here 187 so I hit execute and I'm just gonna save it on my desktop to keep it simple so hit OBJ I don't know monster jam hit OK Open up file name monster guitar whatever. So you hit save. Oh, another thing. It turns out OBJ files it doesn't you it doesn't like spaces. So you want to make sure there's a underscore or something between words or some weird shit like that. Hit save. It's gonna tell you it's gonna create you know this amount of frames. You hit yes. Yeah, you can see it's working now. And it's working. It kind of freezes up. Cinema 4D so you can't do nothing. So just let it work. So once it's done, it's going to tell you, do you want to open the containing folder? You know, you can say no, but just to show you, I hit the yes. And you can see pretty much, see, oh, these are OBJ sequences. You know, pretty much just like a, just like an image sequence. You know, but in this case, just with 3D models, right? So close that. So once that's done, you can jump over to After Effects. So I'm going to go to my element 3D. I'm going to reset all, just to start all over. Hit yes. And I'm going to go to File, Import, Import 3D Sequence. I'm going to go to my desktop. Go into my newly created OBG, OBJ sequence. Hit the first one. Open. Now, this is a part I was kind of fucking up with because uh, I left everything on its own. When I opened it, nothing happened, right? Because there's a transparency on the, on the material. So what I did was... Let's get rid of that. And you go to File and Import OBJ Sequence. Yeah, uncheck Opacity. Just get rid of that. And leave everything else. Uh, I usually put the, the alignment on the bottom. That's just my preference. And there you go. You have your character. and Because there's an OBJ file, it already has the material, which is pretty cool. You know. Hit OK. And yeah, there you go. It's working. Now, like I said, I was kind of disappointed that uh, OBJ files are not high quality as I would expect them to be. Um, from what I've read, there are um, workarounds. So, say if you were working with a file inside of a print, uh, Cinema 4D, 
you can bump up the the amount of polygons that your model has and then export that. Uh, I don't know. I haven't messed with that too much. You know, whatever. For the time being, this is going to work for me. I'm pretty happy with it. To be honest with you, I, I kind of like the shitty, grungy look kind of things anyways. And for the most part, I'd rather work with low poly uh, models because uh, they just render faster. And I, I personally like the look of low poly stuff. You know, I like the retro kind of look. So I'm not interested in like, you know, ultra realistic, visually stunning VFX stuff. You know, as long as it looks cool, I don't care. <laughs> that's just me, right? So that's my style you know, of uh, editing, and I don't see that changing in any way, but um, if high resolution quality is important to you, then it's better to just, you know, you work inside of Cinema 4D, do whatever you need to do inside of Cinema 4D, you know, add your backgrounds and all the stuff, and then render that, you know, add your lights, but that's basically it. I think it's pretty cool, you know, it took me a while, but, you know, I'm glad I found that script to export, you know, no VJ sequence. Yeah, because originally I was going to get the Rift Type Pro, and this thing cost $50, but um, it turns out that they only have versions designed for R14, and it kind of stops right there, so uh, it's kind of disappointing. And also, like I said, I had R12, and the animation files I was getting from Mixamo, it wasn't working in uh, Cinema 4D R12, so glad I didn't spend my money on that, because I would have been more pissed off. So yeah, that's basically it. I hope this tutorial helps you out. You know, I just spent fucking half a day trying to figure this shit out, and I just showed you this in hopefully under 10 minutes. So I hope it helps. Take care and peace. Bye.